What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 wrestling records that will never be broken. This should be a great video, man. Right now, shit. <laughs> with the way Roman Reigns title reign is going right now, uh shit, it, that record may not even be broken <laughs> ever again, man. Like he it's it's ridiculous how long his title reign is. So it'll be interesting to see if someone's ever able to break that record, you know. So we're gonna check this out. This should be a good video. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. And uh let's get right into this one, man to be broken but at the risk of opening myself up to the criticism and i told you so's of a thousand trolls there are some in wrestling that simply never will be some of these records are incredible accomplishments that the holders are quite right to shout about whereas others are not only records that nobody should want to be associated with but are reasons that careers suffered and companies closed mm. i'm adam pacitti from cultaholic wrestling and these are 10 pro wrestling records that will never be broken Joy Join us. But before we start, today's list is sponsored by NordVPN. We at Cultaholic Skip truly believe this. that Nord is the expectation from fans is that, given the grand stage, some would say the grandest stage that the match is taking place on, that the company and performers involved will go above and beyond to produce something extra special. That hasn't always been the case, obviously, and some world title matches at Mania can underwhelm, if not downright infuriate, audiences. Very One true. such match was Daniel Bryan's shocking 18-second uh, yeah. loss to Sheamus at WrestleMania Despicable. 28, which blindsided everyone and left a sour taste in the mouth for a long time to come. Mm -hmm. Despite the infamy that match subsequently enjoyed, it is not the shortest world title match in WrestleMania history. That honor goes to Kane and Chavo Guerrero, who were out there for a whopping eight seconds eight for their seconds, ECW bro. title match at WrestleMania 24. That just lets you know how much they cared about ECW. All right. Oh. Chavito dropped the strap to the big red machine following a single choke slam. It was the first and only only time the ECW title was defended at the Showcase of the Immortals. Number 9, the highest know. rating for an American televised wrestling show. Some wrestling mm. fans seem to enjoy discussing a particular show's ratings more than what they did or didn't enjoy about the actual show itself. That is all you see on Twitter when they're I'm, it's crazy. We live in a time period where now ratings validate how good a show truly is. I remember a time period People didn't, fans weren't really, they, they didn't care about ratings like that. Now, it's a talking point to compare companies. Oh, well, we, Raw did this and AEW did this. Where was this years ago? Nobody was talking about ratings. Now, people talk about ratings to validate their point on why a show is better than the next show. Is stupid. While ratings are, in some ways, an important barometer to judge the popularity of a performer, storyline, or in fact the overall business, their importance can sometimes be overstated, particularly mm -hmm. in today's varied multimedia world. Back on February 5th, 1988, however, they were very much an important thing, especially when it came to WWE and its relationship with Network NBC, who had greenlit an hour-long special for Vince McMahon's company in a then-coveted Friday night slot right in the middle of the vaunted sweeps period. Both parties had cause to celebrate when the numbers came in for the main event, which saw Hulk Hogan defending the WWE title against Andre the Giant and the ensuing controversy with the Million Dollar Man and twin referees. It drew a 15.2 rating, the Damn. percentage of American homes with a TV tuned into that show, or roughly 33 million viewers. Damn. 33 That's a lot million. of people. Bro. Kind of puts all that back and forth about the so-called Wednesday Night Wars into perspective, doesn't yeah. it? Number eight, wow. the most world title changes for one company in a single year. Hmm. A promotion's world championship is, from a kayfabe perspective at least, its most valuable asset, or Perhaps. at least it should be. The world title in the right hands and protected well can become the centerpiece of a company, something that can be used to spark up the best feuds, lead to the biggest matches, and mm -hmm. crucially, draw big money. In the dumpster fire that was WCW in the year 2000, <laughs> the once prestigious WCW World Heavyweight... Yeah, uh, bro, the WCW Championship was getting passed around like 
<laughs> like a bag of chips. Hey, you want some? You want some chips? Hey, I got some chips. You want some chips? Here, take the chips. The title became a joke prop that changed hands an astonishing twenty-five times. Jeez. That is an average of over two title changes per month. But Jeez. really, that doesn't begin to tell the whole story. Only Sid's reign with the gold was respectable, lasting seventy-six days. Sid also had a reign that lasted one day, though, as did Chris <laughs> Benoit, Diamond Dallas Page, and Jeff Jarrett. While Kevin Nash and Ric Flair both had reigns that lasted less than a couple of hours. Worse still were Booker wow. Vince Russo and actor David Arquette's short but da And I remember y'all telling me about this when we were playing the uh, the Quarry game that David Arquette was the WCW champion. Insane. Damaging reigns and the number of times the title was simply vacated. Five, if you were wondering. Number seven, The Rock's 100. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has been at least partly responsible for setting a bunch of records both in wrestling and Hollywood. Mm -hmm. A super heavyweight at the box office, The Great One is essentially an industry under himself as the movie world's most bankable leading man. That financial muscle flexed its way back into WWE when he returned to work with John Cena at WrestleMania 28, his billing opposite Big Match John being largely credited for the show drawing a record 1,217,000 pay-per-view buys. Maybe that's hardly a surprise though, considering yeah, the, the people's champion had been bolstering business for years at that point. According to Dave Meltzer, Dwayne is the first and so far only person to headline 100 shows that topped 10,000 paid fans in a single year. Damn. This would have been in 2000, when The Rock was WWE's premier babyface in the absence of the injured Steve Austin, mm -hmm. who had done pretty damn decent business himself in the two years before going under the knife. So popular was WWE at this point, and so on fire was the most electrifying man in sports entertainment, that the sellouts came naturally, whether it was a pay-per-view, TV taping, or non-televised house show. Number six. He was just, bro, it's The Rock. You wanted to see him. It didn't matter. You were going to pay money to see The Rock. That was one of the people you wanted to see. The people's champ. The shortest time in the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble is a great opportunity for superstars to either put in a proper shift or otherwise make moments to stand out. Mm -hmm. The Rumble brings up a myriad of possibilities when it comes to creative ways to start or continue feuds, as well as ways to highlight particular performers with eliminations, saves, and so on. Ordinarily, a wrestler being chucked out quickly would be something for that individual to lament, but a quick elimination can actually be a way to be remembered. Take, for example, Bushwhacker Luke being thrown over the top while doing the Bushwhacker walk and then continuing to do it on his way to the back. <laughs> or how about Jerry Lawler taking a big backwards bump from a Bret Hart right hand? Both of those eliminations occurred within about four seconds of entry, but the record for the quickest elimination is actually even shorter than that. I think it's for the longest time, the record was held by the Warlord, who was clotheslined out by Hulk Hogan in just two seconds in 1989. It's, it's, it's a record that stood for 20 years until it was halved by Santino <laughs> Morella, yep. who was eliminated in a single second by Kane. In his defense, he wasn't ready. Yeah, he hit Number the, five, I wasn't ready. three weeks. Love him or hate him, you... Uh, the infamous, he was on top for 83 weeks against uh, WWE at, or WWF. At really have to give credit to Eric Bischoff for turning the ship around at WCW and not only helping them survive, but thrive and ultimately end up beating WWE at their own game for 83 consecutive weeks. Yes, WCW Nitro under Easy es watch managed to better WWE Raw's ratings from mm -hmm. June 17th, 1996 to April 13th, 1998. Some weeks, Nitro blew Raw out of the water, while other weeks the margins were rather close, but the fact is that for 83 weeks in a row, WCW got a big W over their competitor. In yep. today's wrestling landscape, it seems unthinkable that another promotion, even one with momentum such as AEW, could go head-to-head -head with one of WWE's major shows like Raw or SmackDown and come out on top for such a sustained period of time. The Monday Night Wars were a special era in the business, one where records were routinely set 
project and then promptly broken as business was booming, but a lot has changed since then, and it's not plausible that, regardless of how WWE's popularity may dip, that a rival would be able to best them so consistently. Number four. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. Uh, can it happen? Possibly. But it, I don't I don't see that happening night right now with AEW. Maybe we talk maybe a few years down the line. Possibly we will see if AEW Dynamite can actually start competing rating wise with the with the main roster. Granted, at the end of the day, the only thing that really should matter is good entertaining wrestling and, and uh, yeah, entertaining wrestling. You know, good characters. That's the most important thing. The ratings will come when they're supposed to come. That's my opinion on it. Most WWE matches by a single performer. There have been many Iron Men in WWE history, those performers who have competed across multiple decades, digging in and grafting hard as soldiers for the company during good years and bad. Some wrestle hundreds upon hundreds of matches, while others wrestle thousands in McMahon-owned rings. One man, however, is in a class of his own. WWE Hall of Famer Kane is the superstar who has wrestled more WWE matches than any other. Damn. According to records, the Big Red Machine has competed in 2,811 WWE matches to date. Damn. His next closest competitor, Randy Orton, is still about 400 odd matches shy of Kane's tally, and given that the Viper is approaching his mid-40s, there's not much chance of him catching up. Though, never say never. As for anyone else currently on the roster hitting Kane numbers, you wouldn't count on it, given how many fewer shows WWE runs these days as compared to the mayor of Knox County's heyday. Of course, the two that's a lot of damn matches. Sheesh, that's a lot of damn matches. 2,811 matches attributed to Kane should actually be credited to not only that gimmick, but also to Fake Diesel and Isaac Yankum DDS. Look, we've got to give him credit for something, all right? Number three, the highest attendance for a professional wrestling show. All right, now, this one is a little tricky because mm -hmm. every wrestling promotion in the world has, does, and will continue to inflate the attendances yep. of their shows, especially major shows that draw impressive enough Especially crowds WWE. anyway. Debates will rage on as to whether WrestleMania 3 really did have 93,173 in the Pontiac Silverdome, or if Mania 32 really did attract 101,763 fans to Texas's AT&T Stadium. Those are big numbers, whether they're slightly inflated or not, but they do not compare with the crowds that WCW and New Japan wrestlers performed in front of at the two-night co-produced Collision in Korea shows in 1995. Hmm? Reports vary as to what the real numbers were, but for Night One in Pyongyang, there were supposedly around 150,000 there, while for Night Two, that number grew to somewhere close to 170,000, with some claiming as many as 190,000. These weren't paying fans, mind you, as they were obligated to be there by the oh. North Korean state as part of the International Sports and Culture Festival for Peace. A selection of matches from the two days were later broadcast by WCW on pay-per-view, which, ironically, drew a record low 30,000 buys. Wow. Number two, the long... So it was like, they had to be there. It wasn't like, oh, we paid to be here. No, we probably were forced to be here. That's a lot of people. Woo, that's a lot of people. Biggest uninterrupted WWE title reign. WWE deserve a lot of credit for booking Universal Champion Roman Reigns so strongly and having him hold on to the belt for as long as he has. Lengthy world title reigns aren't exactly a staple of modern day WWE, mm -hmm. with the Tribal Chiefs run harkening back to the days when a top star would wear the strap for sometimes years at a time. Though Roman's 600 plus day reign at the time of recording is certainly impressive, he still has a long way Way to yeah. go until he can match or better some historic WWE world title reigns of the past. He's still less than halfway to Bob Backlund and Hulk Hogan's first reigns, 1470 and 1477. I don't know if the modern modern day wrestling fan can deal with a thousand plus days. As of me filming this right now. Actually, let me. I'm gonna check this live because I I don't know the actual title reign. I could, it could be. I hope it's not wrong. 763 days. He's not far from a thousand, but I don't think we can deal. 
with it being a thousand. I'm just be honest. I don't, I, I don't know. It, it may, he may, he may get there, bro. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Seven days, respectively. But those epic reigns are themselves just about half of Bruno Sammartino's mm. legendary initial WWE title run. The living legend held on to the main prize for an incredible 2,803 Ridiculous. days between May 17th, 1963 and January 18th, 1971, <laughs> until he was downed by Ivan Koloff, who was used as an interim champion in order to pass it along to Pedro Morales. Someone could conceivably hold on to one of WWE's titles for the best part of a decade, but it's hard to see happening, isn't it? Number one, the... The decade. <laughs> a decade of just being the champ, bro. But wrestling was different back then. In fact, back then, people didn't know about the business. People believed wrestling was real. Like, legit real. They believed the storylines were real. They believed the matches were real. They didn't know it was all a work. So, back then... People wanted, they treated this as a real thing. No one can beat this guy. And people wanted to see him. Streak. As of now, the longest undefeated streak in WrestleMania history currently belongs to Rob Van Dam, who has a 4 and 0 record when it wow. comes to the showcase of the Immortals. Oh, wow. That Didn't is know a that. solid 17 wins behind The Undertaker's famed WrestleMania winning streak, which stretched from 1991's WrestleMania 7 to 2014's WrestleMania 30 when it was broken by Brock Lesnar. What broken. originally started by chance eventually grew into one of the biggest drawing cards for the company's flagship event, as the dead man competed in a range of matches where the streak was always on the line. Mm -hmm. If anyone is going to even come close to The Undertaker's winning record at the granddaddy of them all, WWE are gonna have to start planning it right now and see that it plays out over the best part of two decades. The odds of that happening are practically non-existent, yeah. and frankly, there's as much chance of RVD notching another 17 victories before all is said and done. <laughs> Didn't know. RVD, man, out there with the, the long-lasting WrestleMania streak. That's awesome. I didn't, I didn't even know that. Damn. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But, yeah, man, comment down below. Let me know which one of these records surprised you the most, man. The RVD one definitely surprised me. I didn't even know he's 4-0 at WrestleMania. Awesome. Shout out to RVD. Still has one of the longest. He has one of the longest runs streaks at wrestlemania man so that was pretty cool but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel we're almost at 100k and we're gonna get there very soon but i appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next week peace